Hey y'all, this is Pam, and today as promised, I am going to show y'all how I cook a, a red gravy or a tomato gravy. We call it red gravy, and I'm going to be using some uh, country style ribs, I think. Loin. Yeah, loin country style ribs. Okay, here I have my little Macware Magnolite pot, my little oval pot. You can see my hand, so the pot's not that huge which is what I love about it, and it's oval, so it's a roaster, instead of a round Dutch oven, so you got more surface. Oh, and I got my pan super heating up. I think it's hot enough. Put a little bit of vegetable oil, and like I said, don't worry about the amount of oil, because you can always take it out when you're done. You can always, but you need, you need the oil to um, brown that meat super great. And if y'all saw my other video where I did the, I forgot what it was, <laughs> I forgot what it was. It was um something with brown. Anyway, uh, y'all y'all know I'm crazy these days, crazier than the normal crazy. But anyway, if you go back to my other video, I'll try to remember to link it below if I can. Uh, the secret to a brown gravy is really, really browning that meat. And contrary to what you would think of a red gravy or a tomato gravy, that's the same secret. Brown in that meat. Because the, the gravy's not really going to be red. It's going to be like a, a burnt orange or a rust, rusty red. It's going to be a brownish red. It's not going to be bright red like you see tomato sauce. And um, so... Of course, I found some great deal on, this is pork, pork loin country style ribs, and it was uh, $3.98 a pound. Now, the, the savings it was wasn't super great, but any savings is better than no savings. So, this was regular $11.50, and I got it for $9.66. And it is just about three pounds, and it does have bones, which, in my opinion, I normally, I'll do the boneless with no problem, especially if it's not on, uh, you know, if there's nothing on markdown. But if you have bones in your gravies, it's going to be always a better flavor. Okay, you see how this is scorching hot, and I'm laying them kind of like side down. And I'm not really going to crowd my pot. I could have taken this one and move it here. Nope, that'll actually crowd my pot. So, I'm going to brown this meat and I'll try to time it. It'll be at least 10 minutes, I'm sure. And I'll be back. Okay, we're right about 10 minutes. And you see how nice and brown that is? It's kind of awkward because I'm, I'm not left-handed, but I'm using my left hand because the way the camera is. Okay, so you want it really, really brown. All right. I'm going to go another 10 minutes, and I'll be back. Okay, this side is not quite 10 minutes, because I got three more pieces of meat to brown. But it is brown. It's very brown. And that's what you want, you see. Now, this piece right here is not quite, this other piece right here is not quite as brown, but that'll be okay, because by the time we're finished, the bottom of this pot is going to be pretty brown. So now I'm going to put the other three pieces in here. Let's put it, uh, let's put it the same way, I guess. Okay. Okay, we're going to season up this meat. I like to use whatever I like to use. 
Tony sometimes. Season all, slap your mama. Whatever seasoning you want to do, you do you. Some people just like salt and pepper. That's it. Nothing else. That's perfectly fine. It's going to come out good. And in the end, that was just me slamming the cabinet. Uh, in the end, if it ain't, you know, salty enough or spicy enough, I add cayenne, I add whatever, some more seasoning. You, you can fix it up at the end if it ain't perfect. And I'll show you, that ain't a problem. So don't worry about it if it's not seasoned enough in the beginning. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with these three little pieces of meat because my pot's kind of small. But I still had, um, still into the freezer and I had that one pack. Normally I would have, um, you know, cooked half and saved the other half in the freezer. But I can't do that right now. So I'm cooking all of this and I'm going to try to can it up once it's cooked. Okay, guys. So whenever this is, I'm going to brown this meat on both sides. Then I'll bring y'all back. I was turning it over and I forgot to bring y'all back. But... There's the other side. See what I mean? Is it brown? Okay. Now I'm going to take this out, but I got a little bit of a game change. I changed my game plan. The other three pieces of meat, I think I'm going to uh, cook, finish cooking them in the oven and I'm going to uh, maybe put a little barbecue sauce on them or something, make another meal. Okay, well, let me take these out. See, I got them all in just a corral bowl, one of my favorite bowls in the kitchen. Okay, now I'm going to add some bell pepper, some onions, and some celery. So, I'm just going to dump it in. That was frozen. Onions not. It doesn't matter. You can mix and match however. I would normally have my vent on, but the sizzling is enough. Okay, that's some celery frozen. Like I said, I'm emptying out the freezer. If y'all ever heard of a roux spoon, Cajuns talk about a roux spoon. That's a roux spoon. See how the bottom is flat? And it's flat, so when you browning this, now I'm going to have some water in here because of the frozen vegetables, but that's okay. Just let it evaporate out, but when it's going to be, when it's going to stick again to the pot, you can just scrape it. That's why the bottom of the spoon is flat when you make roux, although I make roux in a slow cooker now, and um, I got a video on that. I'll, I'll link, try to, try to remember to link that, but I'll probably forget, but if I don't, if I do forget, y'all go look for it. It's uh, cooking roux in a slow cook on my channel. Okay, and this, yeah, when good Cajun food is not fast food. <laughs> it's not quick. It's not, it's slow cooking. Uh, my mama back in the day got up in the morning and cooked supper. When we left for school, she was cooking supper. Now, it didn't take all day. It, it don't take all day. It might take a couple hours from start to finish, and I'm doing other stuff. While my meat was browning, I was doing other stuff. Uh, I couldn't do anything on my phone because I video with my phone. That's all I have. But you can you can walk away from it. You know, like this, I got to let that evaporate. And then um, and then it's going to start to stick and brown again. So I'm going to go do some more moving the boxes, which is what I've been doing. Then dehydrating, canning, moving boxes, packing. I'm getting it done. Okay, guys, when this starts to stick again, I'll bring y'all back. Guys, if you can hear, the sizzle sounds a little more, like, subdued. I call it tighter, like, the bubbles are smaller, I guess. And so, my water, you can see, has disappeared now. And what's left is the oil. And you can see it's picking up all the bottom of the pot. So, I just let these get brown again, so they, they're not really white, they caramelize when I'm finished. I mean, they're brown, they got some brown on them, and they got a little bit right now, but it ain't much. So, 
after that I will add the meat back in and I got a big old bag of tomato sauce I didn't freeze it like this That's my mama did that I don't freeze nothing in a big ball like that but in this case and in the cases that she uses it it don't matter because we're gonna, I'm gonna use the whole thing so uh yeah once these onions are down I'm gonna throw that um, tomato sauce in there and uh, let that tomato sauce defrost, you know, melt down. And then we'll add the meat. It's a process. Everybody's asking me, been asking me, how do you cook some good Cajun food? And I've done gumbo on my channel. I've done gumbo in the Instant Pot. So that doesn't take long. That's a, that's a good, quick process, and it tastes really legit. And, uh, but the only thing is you got to have a really dark roux, dark chocolate roux, uh, not real chocolate, chocolate color. And, um, you got to have a dark roux to do that. But once you got the dark roux, then you just, then it's a quick process in the Instapot. And, um, but Cajun cooking takes love and time, love and time. That's what you need. Okay. I don't, well, don't want my video to be too long. I'm going to have to cut some of this out, but. Y'all can see how it's starting to stick. See right there in the pot how it's starting to stick? That's what you want. You want it to stick. And so now I'm going to put this whole big old block of this regular tomato sauce. Hunt tomato sauce. I'm it up. There you go. Just to prove that's what I was going to do. I didn't want y'all to think that ain't what I was going to do. But that is. All right, now I'll let this all melt down. Then we'll be back. Okay, hey guys, I'm keeping it real here. This as much has what defrosted, and I'm going to take it out now. Because to my eyes, that's enough uh, That's enough tomato sauce for that. For this pork, uh, pork gravy I'm making. Okay, let's put the uh, three of the pieces back in. One and the throw right there. Three pieces. Let's put this one because. Okay. And I'm going to pour the juice from the meat back in there. From that, that settled in that bowl. All right. Now the goodness starts. Now this is going to be some slow cooking right here. That's why my mama started in the morning, I guess. That and she could get it all done. And it was easy to reheat, you know, it was time for supper. Most Cajun foods you can reheat for the most part. Some is a little harder, but for the most part. Okay, I, I'm going to bring this up to a boil, which ain't going to take long. And uh, then I'm going to lower my fire all the way to a light, you know, just a simmer. Okay, you can see it maybe starting to boil. So now I'm going to lower it. Oh, I remember now what I cooked that brown gravy. That was sausage gravy. Fresh sausage gravy. I did it the same way. Whether you're cooking red or brown, you want you want uh, you want your meat brown. Okay, you see this little crack? I hope you can see it. It's just a little tiny crack. Not even a maybe a fourth of an inch. So um and I got it on low simmer. And that's gonna uh cook for oh Lord, at least an hour. I'll be back. Okay, guys, I am back, and I cooked this about two hours, and here's your gravy. And what I did is I took the meat out, and I cut it up. I took the meat out, and I cut it up, and I uh, removed the bones. This is the bones that they had. That's it, just a little end bones, I call it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to can this. Just like you would chili or anything else. So, but I'm going to can it on, you know, for 90 minutes for these quarts on the meat, uh, meat time. So, oop, I bumped you. Hang on. Okay, I'll show y'all one jar and then I'll do the rest. But what I'm going to do is divide this amount of meat into 
my four jars. And I'm doing four jars right now because my uh, carry electric pressure canner holds four quarts. And I think it's a good amount of meat. I will be eating this just myself. So it's not like, not like I need a bunch of meat in each jar. In fact, I will make it work. Okay, I think I got it sort of even. Maybe this one needs a little more. It's not that big of a deal because it'll be good and I, lo I love rice. So, and that's what I serve this with is rice. I took the other three ribs and I put them in my pressure cooker, my uh, Instapot. And then I'm going to, uh, I am going to put those in the oven with some barbecue sauce. But that'll be another video. Okay, let me turn this off. So this is what you want. This rusty colored gravy. That was just my lid that slid. And I, I'm gathering up. There's some onions and bell pepper and celery, as y'all remember. My jars wasn't totally hot, so what I like to do, and I just realized that that's why I'm going from jar to jar. I don't think y'all can even see me, though. Okay. I'm going from jar to jar, adding a little bit. I added the meat, which was hot. And then what I do to kind of temper the jars is how I call it. Might not be right. I don't know. Don't copy me if you don't think it's right. But... I have done it 40 years and it works. So what I do is I'm scooping up. My ladle's not that big. See, my ladle's little. And I scoop two ladles, pulling up the onions from underneath. And I'm adding a ladle to each jar. First of all, with the meat, which was warm. Then I added a couple of ladles. And then that, that'll warm up your jars. Don't add a whole ton of hot liquid to a jar at one time. But if you go around and add a, la a little ladle to each jar, it tempers the jar and warms it up slowly. Normally, I would take them right out of my dishwasher, but I washed them last night. So, that didn't happen. And it looks like I won't have enough gravy for the four jars. So I think I'm going to combine it into two jars. That's what I'll do. I'm trying to keep it real here for y'all because things don't always work out like, like you planned. Because it's not really a, a set plan. I just cooked it. And... uh. What I might do is wait and can them tomorrow. Put them in the ice box, maybe. Can them tomorrow and maybe do two jars of beans with it. Or or just that the rest of that tomato sauce. I may do that. So I'm just realizing I didn't know. Uh, I didn't cook any rice. I wasn't planning on really eating this tonight. But the way we eat it, we eat it just like we did that um sausage gravy. The way we, I say we, it's just me, but we as Cajuns eat uh, this gravy and meat over rice. So if you go and look at my brown sausage video, I'm going to eat this the same way, but I'm, I'm jarring it up because I had to take it out the freezer. The same old story, so I'm taking it out the freezer because I'll be moving. So I'm em trying to empty the freezer into something that I can move that's not frozen or cold food. So, uh... I will have some cold foods, but I'll narrow it down to a small ice chest, a, a small in Cajun terms, ice chest. We all have ice chests here that are huge, but uh, into a nice chest, let me put it that way. And I tend to say everything small, even though it's not really small. And so, or I will say a little ice chest, even though it might be a 90 quart ice chest, <laughs> 96 quart. Uh, 
I'll say, get the little ice chest. But that's just how we talk. And uh, so I'm going to do the two quarts of this. Yeah, getting back to, I eat it over rice with a vegetable side or whatever you want. So I hope this helped y'all understand what red gravy is, Cajun red gravy, tomato gravy, pork red gravy, all that's the same. We can do chicken red gravy, we can do beef red gravy, but my favorite and pretty much what I always do is pork red gravy. And I'm not big on pork chops, I know that's kind of strange, but I like a fattier either pork ribs or pork butt or something like that. Fat equals flavor. Okay, guys, I will talk to y'all soon. Please like, comment, and share. And subscribe if you're not subscribed. I am almost to 900 subscribers. And I'm so trying to get to that thousand. I'm working really hard so I can monetize my channel until I get my disability because I really need the income. Okay, thank you guys. Talk to y'all soon. Bye. Okay, guys, here you can see my tomato gravy, red pork, pork red gravy. And this is just tomato sauce. So you see the difference in the color? And now I'm going to put them in the canner. And I'll try to show y'all a picture when I come out. Okay, guys, this is the finished product out of the canner. This is the um, red gravy. And you can see it's still bubbling. And this is the tomato sauce, this one. It's amazing how it just bubbles. So yeah, I have four jars. I just took two out so I can compare the two, show you all the, the coloring, you know, in the two. That's them out the jar, out the canner.